Oh, recording in progress. All right. Well, this must be the start of the episode then. So we're going live a bit earlier tonight because we're going to go live in our Facebook group um, for the 12 questions segment. Um, I'm going to turn that down a little bit. If you guys have got questions for this show, you can either join the Facebook group and put them ahead of time in there, or sometimes we go live in there, which is a little bit more fun, but also not as entertaining on the audio. So we're kind of trying to work out the best way to do it. But if you're listening to this on the audio or on the YouTube, please join our Facebook group at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash boss and the brewer. And you can ask questions and we will answer them on the show. We, I mean, basically we, we answer every single question people ask because, you know, there's not that many really. And by the end of the show, we're ready to answer some questions. Oh my God, my dog is trying to up my leg. You got to stop doing this, man. It's episode 50. Should have learned by now. Stop it. Out. I'll put you outside if you keep doing it. Little bastard. All right. So Hendo's not here yet. Um, but I did say to him three minutes ago, 7 p.m. And he replied back and said, yes. And it's now 7.02. So I feel like we can... Like, this is earlier than normal, but even considering that, I feel like we can place the blame firmly on Hendo for rocking up late to this podcast. Uh, so on the ticket tonight, there's quite a bit happening this week. We're going to have an update on the scooters. I don't know what he's been up to with his scooter, so I'm curious to hear about that. I've got an update on my house, which is probably boring for everyone, but he always asks me, so we'll get into that. I curated a quiz for Hendo on F1 because the F1's coming back this weekend and I've got five questions. My prediction, I'm going to make this here while he's not here, so he's not going to know what my prediction is. My prediction is he will get zero of these questions right. All right, so let's see how we go. And is there a prize? Probably not. No, no prize. Well, maybe if he gets if he gets all of them right, maybe we can do the, um, he could get, a point in our over-under competition. So we do have an update in the over-under competition because we had a bet on Behemoth on their crowdfunding on what their EBITDA would be when the crowdfunding went live. So we've got an update on that. And I think that's about it. We didn't have any bets on anything else, I don't think. I think we're going to put a bet on for the Indies. So I have to think of something. We might just do it live on air if Hendo ever turns up. I'm going to bring up our... Little notes here to work out what the over-under situation. I think it's even after last week. Let's have a look. Oh, 2-1 to me. Okay. 2-1 to me. And then we've got the Behemoth one. We've got our National Home Brew Awards for Hendo. They're the two outstanding ones. And then we've got, to, we've got to do a bet for Indies and, I don't know, whatever else we want to gamble on. It's always something to gamble on. And the first to 10 wins a Dixon Flano, a Kruger one. Has to be specifically that. So we need four, we need Indies will be seventy three more bets. So let me know if you have any ideas for what those bets can be. Um, oh, here he is. Here is the boss man. He's coming in hot. Let's see what he's let's see what his lighting situation is like. Hendo, there he is. What's going on? Oh wow, you're wearing a sponsored shirt. I, am I wearing a sponsored shirt? Is that a, is that a sponsored shirt? <laughs> I don't know. I just it's just what I happened to throw on this morning. Really, no coincidence. It's on it's on the docket to talk about. Well, maybe, maybe. <laughs> I just slapped my dog, and now he's licking me and humping me even more <laughs> than before. A great that relationship. That was the intention of the slap. It was great. Right. Awesome relationship you got there. It's it's interesting. Elon, you should, you should bath bath your dog. No. Nah. He doesn't Get need it. He's a wild animal. It. Yeah, but smelly dogs are smelly dogs, man. He stinks, dude. It's so bad. Give him a bath. No, nah, too busy. What's happening? Oh, you know, very busy day today. Very busy day today. Now you do that thing where you... Um, I mean, you you do you know you do a bit of bit of technology and all that sort of stuff. Move move my CRM to a new system today. Oh, really? 
Yeah. Do you want to disclose what that. system you move from and which one you move to? Uh, I, actually, I think I don't mind. I moved from Active Campaign oh. to uh, Left Hand Active Campaign. It's too fucking expensive, man. To um, Groundhog, which is a WordPress based uh, CRM, and it's excellent. I used to use it. I've moved away from it, um, but moved back to it, and it's really, it's gotten really good. So does that mean so, so you're talking about for like emails out to your list and stuff like that? Yeah. So you so yeah, that sends them from your domain then? That's right. Yes. Yeah. Groundhog. I'm not familiar with it. Groundhog with two G's. Groundhog at the start or at the end? At the end, probably. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. At the end, mate. <laughs> Marketing on it. Oh, yeah, interesting. Okay, very cool. Yeah, WordPress has got some powerful shit. Is that is it free or like free ish? Annual payment or something? Ah, uh, pay forty bucks a month for it. Oh, okay. So you still pay monthly? No, oh, I pay annually, but it's it's not two hundred sixty bucks a month. Wow, is that what Active Campaign was costing you? That's where I was at. Yeah. Well, wow, you must have a decent sized list, mate. Oh, you know. Did you have much um sort of tagging and um automations and shit going on in Active Campaign? Yeah. Or? Yeah, because I had to move all that over. That's what I had to basically re- rebuild it from scratch and in yeah, the process wow. managed to accidentally email a few customers and that's so... <laughs> anyway interesting good. okay i would say it it was it was all right it's quite pleasant to be fair i just got stuck into it took two days but it's done now yeah i use active campaign it's it's pretty good it's very good at doing what it does but but everything that i do with active campaign Groundhog does, yeah, as well, and it's cheaper. Yeah, that's fair. My only complaint with Active Campaign is the um, if you want to use the API and use plugins and stuff like that, you need to use like the higher level version, which is just way more expensive than the normal version. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's changed, but it's like ludicrously more expensive. Yeah, like ten x the price or something, which is yeah frustrating. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, interesting. What have you been doing? Um, I've been trying to work out whether to celebrate this as a milestone episode or not. Because uh, what are we on? Oh, 50. It's, well, it's episode number 50, but we did episode number 48, which is a multiple of 12, and you mm-hmm. didn't even notice, showed it absolutely zero love whatsoever. Yeah. Um, episode 50, it's potentially significant, but 52 for a weekly podcast would be a year. Yes. And I don't know, 60 would be a, a decent multiple of 12. So, yeah. 50 well, let's probably... do them all. Let's celebrate them, them all. all. Okay. All right. Cheers then. 50th what... podcast. Have you got, you a, got beer? a beer to celebrate the 50th podcast now? I have, uh, well, if it's a lot of big news and it's a big milestone. So, I've got uh, some Jack Daniels here. Jesus and, uh, but I actually want to drink. This one here, because fuck it, go large. I've got the future magic oh, scene double. Wow. Okay. This. What have you got? I've got the Black Ops British India Pale Ale. Oh, sick! A couple of reasons. One is it's our latest lim- limited release. The other reason is our sponsorships are drying up. Let's be honest. Yeah, we're in a dry patch. It's it's been a tough winter. There's not a lot of beer being given away to podcasts like yeah. ours. To get under Maz, I reckon. Hey? Also, I noticed I looked at this glass and I can see visibly that it's it's filthy. Look at this one. Look at this glass. That's disgusting. Right, I'm getting that photo. Hang on. I I clean my lens on my camera more more than you clean your glass. Right. That's truly revolting. Um, let me see how this handles this beer because this it visibly just splotchy and. It's oily. It's like I've cleaned this with oil. Oh, that's rather pleasant beer, isn't it? How many standos is it? 2.5. Two and a half. Out, didn't we? Yeah. Could be a field trip. All right. There's mine. Looks delicious. Nice. Um, mm. British India are a good band, man. Yeah, they're awesome. The, the guy owns a pub in Melbourne. He emailed me and he's like, oh, can we have a beer on tap? I'm like, shit, yeah. Yeah, which pub? Don't know. Forgot. Some pub. Mm-hmm. 
Um, oh, I didn't go to Crafted this year, so I didn't get to meet him or, or um, experience any of it, but it, it sounded like mm. it went well, and they've been cool about it all. They're not, like, super involved, but they were keen to have a beer. Yeah, excellent. Uh, hey, I've got a... I've got a uh, F1 quiz for you. Yeah, right, yeah. I'm prepared. So I've got five questions. Um, I, I don't have a prize, though. Does that matter? Do you need a prize? No, I don't need prizes. No? All right. Oh, wait, sorry. Dan and Scooter update first. Da- okay. Can I just say <clears throat> that you need to learn how to spell Dan No, no, I changed it. Have a look. It's got a H in it. It doesn't have a H in it. No, have a look. It doesn't. I changed it. Oh, what the fuck? I fucking changed that. Would you like me to fix it? Oh, no, there no, we go. I changed that. Wait a second. I'm going to do a revision on this document. Version history. I changed... Well, maybe I misspelled it twice. Mm-hmm. I changed it for sure. Oh, my God. Could That's be autocorrect. Bullshit. Maybe it's autocorrect. I swear to God I changed that. I did type it wrong, and then I, fi- I thought I fixed it. Oh, she's a hot beer. I know. I know, dude. It's pretty hot. <laughs> What's the standards on the the, uh, Jack Daniels? Oh, this is regular strength. It's only 1.4. Okay. You get the American serve and it's two. I'm going to put this fucking dog outside. Give me one minute. I'm going to put this dog outside. He's he's, he's out of control. Oh, my God. You know. Danchin. I'm fixing the spelling. He spelt it D-A-N-S-H-I-O-N. And that's... Imagine spelling mansion, M-A-N-S-H-I-O-N. That's... You just can't do it. I thought you'd gotten over it, but nope. Uh, still, still as horny as ever. Oh, well. Has he still got his balls? He does. They're, they're pretty impressive. You see him, like, lying down, and then they just hang out the back. They just, they're fucking gigantic. Why don't you give him the old... Yeah. Well, I think I have to. I think that's part of the deal when you buy dogs like that. Yeah. Um, He'll be much happier for it. Really? Mm. Seems like a bad thing to do. He likes his... He's happy. Yeah, but he's fr- frustrated. Unless he's getting a bit of he's, action... He is frustrated. He's yeah. going to be frustrated. Yeah. I so can, if you want to make him yeah. happy, just... I do. Well, can I, but I think I think I might just put the rubber band around it like they're doing Clarkson's Farm with a sheep. No. Okay. It's very painful. It's different. Oh, is it? Dogs can feel that. Oh, okay. The sheep are fine. Sheep's different. Different? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. They don't have feeling down there. Don't they? I don't know. I'm just guessing. Okay. Well, he seems fine. But you might have to get fake nuts to go in the old nut sack. So it looks like he's still got nuts. Can you do that? Yeah. I'll do that. Like you or your dog? Oh, no. I'll do it as well. I'll do it as well. Why not? Why not? Oh Jesus! Um, all right, so Danchin, this this is hopefully all my right. last podcast from this house. Well, whoa, okay. Because next week I'm moving out of this house and hopefully moving into the Danchin. If right. not, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. But okay. That's the plan. Right. Yeah. Update. Um. So it's all everything's all in and carpet and yeah fittings and would you do your inspection? I did my inspection, but it was there was a whole bunch of shit to fix up. Like I don't really know why I was there, to be honest, because the guy was like, "We should fix this. We should fix this." And I was like, "Yeah, you definitely should." Like, why am I here? Like, I don't need to tell you that. You um, have to go back and do another one. So yeah, the, I, I went there today. The QA guy was there. He said there's a couple of touch up things to fix up. Um, the, the backyard's a shit show. There's stuff to do, but I think it's the construction is basically finished. Yeah, good. So Are you yeah. got to put in a pool. No, you can't. You don't have any room, do you? No, the pool's in there. That's the thing. That the, the pool is in there, but there's no landscaping or fencing around the pool. So what they do now is they drop the pool in. These are like precast concrete pools. Yeah, fiberglass pool. Yeah. No, it's concrete. Full concrete yeah, right. pool. Prefab. Um, and they don't commission it until you put up your fencing and stuff. So you move in, fi- finally do all your fencing and landscaping, and then they come in, plug the pool in, fill it up. Great. Yeah. I'll come around for a swim. Yeah, come for, come to the Danchin um, housewarming in. I would see. I, I want to do it once I have a pool because at, at the moment it's just weird. So maybe a month. Yeah, give yeah, it a month. Sick. Yeah, yeah, radio. Right, yeah. And um, scooter. Not good, mate. Oh no, not good. 
So I ordered that you got the stuff ball kit. off. Uh, yeah, well, I ordered that big ball kit. And um, this is what arrived. Well, that... <laughs> okay. okay. Wait, that was like a free extra with the big ball kit? Sorry, I should, for those listening and driving in their car, <laughs> I've got a fucking, I think it's an iPhone 7 case. I could probably use that. Show me it's the back. Pink... Show me the camera. Oh, no, that's an old one. Yeah. It's no, a pink. Good. Um, It's a pink. It's got some writing on it. And I don't know. I think that's actually Japanese. It looks, got, it looks uh, like the Japanese katakana symbols. I used to have my watch. Yeah, in, I've got Google Translate, so I should be able to translate it. Um, And, um, yeah, no big ball kit. Got a fucking $2 phone case. And, um, yeah, they can uh, get fucked. I think that's awesome that when you get scammed on Alibaba, they still send you something. <laughs> 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 fucking hell. Do you know what it says on the back? Do you know what it says Damn on the me. back? Bad girl. <laughs> oh, nice. Love that. So where the fuck's I'm the ball bad kit? Girl. <laughs> what? Where's the big ball kit? That's what I got from the people who bought I bought the big ball kit from. They ripped me off. I've lost wow. 300 bucks. I'm, that's gone. That's it. That's it. Jesus. Thank so you, AliExpress. when we gave everyone the advice on previous podcasts about how good Alibaba was and how cheap it was, that was not Alibaba. Well, it comes with risk. It? You know, you get what you pay for. Okay. We didn't mention that, I don't think. Um, and I'd bought a few things and that sort of thing. And so, uh, look, I'm going to put that down to bad karma because of the source of the scooter and where oh, it came wow. from in the first place. Interesting. Because you stole the scooter. Now someone's stolen not from stolen. you. Well... <laughs> But I got stolen from, definitely. You, how much did that cost? 300? 300 bucks. How much is the scooter worth? Three... Not much. Much more than that? Not much more than that. Okay. But I didn't pay anything for the scooter, no. obviously. No, because they didn't pay anything for the but, fucking phone case. But I have sunk some other money into it. So I had the key done. That was $70. I got a new front fender for it which was a front fender and some mirrors. Um, and that was, I think, about $120. Um, and then $300 on the big ball kit. That's a, it's a pink fucking phone cover that says bad girl. Bad girl. Um, so what are you going to do about this big ball situation? There's nothing I can do, mate. But are you going to get another one? or? Uh, no, I think what I'm going to do, I still want a scooter. Oh, no, you're uh, giving up. Uh, on that one. No. That one's going to go to the tip. It's our spiritual mascot for the podcast. You can't. It's, no, you no, no, no. I'm still, I'm still going to get a scooter. No, but you got, it's got to be the stolen scooter. It's... <laughs> I can't just say I'm getting a new house. It is a different house. Yeah. It's got to be the same scooter. Look, I, I think there's enough bad karma in it that I can go. Oh, no. You know, if it's given you this much grief now, what's it going to be like when you're out on the road? And also, oh, the other thing is, is that. I got my sister's pink scooter, pink Honda today going um, and got a variator and front headlight and all that sort of stuff for it. It's ready to go. No rego, but I took it for a fucking ride anyways because I'm, I'm a bad girl. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, and uh, it's it's all right. It goes good. It'll be good enough for my sister. She's she's She'll be fine with it. This is a this is terrible news. And that scooter is ready to go, basically. So it's it's right. basically it's ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um I'm going to go and buy a scooter that's pretty much road ready for about five hundred bucks. Um, I also <laughs> decided to drive. No, 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 no. Just sec off Facebook or Marketplace okay. or G Game Tree or something like that, and um. Because the thing is, right, is that I'm driving my sister's little 50cc Honda today. It's not very fast. No. Hence the and, big ball kit. Well, even so, the thing is, when you go downhill in the Honda today and you actually go fast, it doesn't feel particularly like safe. Yeah. 
It's probably not particularly it's safe. Really, just really tiny wheels on it and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And so the thing is, I've got the Honda lead engine still, and that's got a big ball kit already on it. And so probably what I might do is fight, try and find a Honda lead. Okay. Change, put the big ball kit off that, take the variator out of the lead, stick that into my sister's Honda today. That should make that go even faster. And probably take the carby off the lead and put that in the Honda today. And it's a big 20 mil carby, and that should make her, hers go at decent speed. Jesus, that's a lot. And just sell yours. I'm gone. No, no, no. The one that I found in the in the in the in the um common room that's gone for the tip. Yeah. Sell so ours. You're throwing out our scooter is, is essentially what you're mm. what are you doing? Yeah. Well, it's not mine. No, it's stolen. It's not yours. But we were we were <laughs> riding this journey with you, mate. All right. <sighs> oh, I took my big scooter over to Black Ops 3 today. Oh, did you? Oh, did you, oh wait, wait. Did you get the beer? Yeah. Nice. It was great. Um, see if I, I don't think we've phone. actually had the beer on the podcast yet, have we? No. Have you got one? I fucking don't. I didn't think about that until that very second. I, I, I got beer from work today and didn't even think about it. There's the big, there's the big scooter. Oh, nice. Black Ops 3. Very good. Um, I'll post that into the Facebook group later. Incidentally, if you're listening to this show for the first time, um, come and join the shit posting at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash boss and the brewer. Yep. And don't be mean to each other because we don't like that. It's supposed no, to be don't be mean. Just like, take the piss. Yeah. Um, damn it. So you're gonna have a, are you going to have a grod on the pod or not? I do have a grotto. Okay. Um, we we sold out online. Did you see that? Yeah. How oh, good? Yeah, it was good. So I went and got my four pack from over at Black Ops Three, and saw Riley and and Jim and um and and Riley's missus was there as well, and yeah, they gave me fucking uh, two four packs. I went to get. It. I said it's only one. So they said, "Oh no, it's like take two. And I'm like, "Oh okay." Guys, I'll stick it on Dan's tab anyway. Nice. Good. <laughs> anyway, so oh, Basher won. I'm going to send him a four pack. Now, Basher, if you're listening, tour for you, tour for Chelsea, new brewer. Okay. That's the rules. Basher's, who's Basher? Brendan Nash. Bruce. Oh, okay. Yes. He's yeah, one of the Brownstone. 12. He, he, he needs. He, he is needs. one of the 12. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay. You ready for the F1 quiz? Absolutely not. But let's All do right. it. All right. So uh, there's got to be something. Okay, no, here, here you go. So if, if you get all five of these right, then you get one point in our over-under competition. Oh, shit, eh? Let's say, let, actually, it, it's pretty tough. Let's let's say you, you get four four out of five right. I, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll let you get one wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, do I have to do this and no Google? You can't Google. You can't Google. No. My hands are in the air. Okay. Um, all right. Question number one. This weekend, Max can secure the title win with a win and fastest lap and Leclerc finishing eighth or worse. So this week in Singapore, when the F1's back. Who else has a mathematical chance of winning the championship in 2022? Not Leclerc. He is second, though. Mathematical chance. There's still, I think this this is this race eighteen. Uh, let me. Mm, I think this is oh, race eighteen. There's something like 20, so. 22 races or something. So. Yeah, but this, that would mean Max would have to not finish like all the last races. Exactly, it's a mathematical chance. If he doesn't, if if he finishes last in every single race from now, including this mm. one, who can mm. mathematically win the t- the title? Mm. If it helps, I'll no. I'm no, not. No. Gonna, I won't give you any quiz. No quiz. Uh probably. Uh... Uh, it's either Leclerc or George Russell. It's not just one person. Oh, oh, right. Okay, it's more than one. It's more than one. Leclerc, George Russell. Um, and Perez, I think. Oh, you fucking got it. You've got it. 
Yeah. Well done. <laughs> I did not. I did not think you would get that one. But, I mean, it is. The, it is second, third, and fourth. But yeah. I know. I think that that sounds pretty fair to me. Yep. Good one. I mean, Max. Max is going to shit it in like the ten that were in ten ten shit in. But oh, you know. 100%. 100%. Impressive from Russell, though, to be this far in and still actually have a chance of winning First the season as well with uh, Mercedes. I think he's yep. done extremely well. All right. Right. This week, Williams announced Russell's ex-teammate, Latifi, will not be in the sport in 2023. Mean the goat. Not be, not be the in Williams, goat. anyway. You call him the, the goat? goat? Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. In the last two years, how many times has he out-qualified his teammate out of 37 races and the teammates being Russell Ooh. and Albon? Oh, say that again. Sorry. How many times in the last two years? So last year he was teammates with Russell. This year he's teammates yes. with Albon. Yes. How many times out of 37 races has he outqualified his teammate? He hasn't at all this year. This is a very, gonna... very difficult question. It's not zero, if that helps, because you're gonna have mm. you're probably gonna say zero. I'd probably I'll I'll take a stab then. I'd say two. I come up with four. I hope my data's correct. Right. Four. Okay. Yeah. I think I think but that would include times when, you know, like Russell, I think Russell like crashed once or he something. He crashed in the qualifying, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, anyway, that he's 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 out. Quick, okay, so you want you you you're one down, but that's okay. You're still not out of mm. it. You had a mathematical chance of winning this quiz. Right. Who is losing to their teammate by the largest percentage margin in F1 this year, but the top five teams only? So that so so when I when I looked at this, you look at like the last team and like one guy's got four points and one's got zero and it's it's like infinity. So the top the top five teams being top teams. Red Bull, Mercedes, Ferrari, McLaren, Alpine. Yeah, yeah. Top yeah, top five or six, but yeah. Basically, just leave out Williams and Haas and um, Alpha Romeo. Alpha, yeah. So, so the question is, who is losing to their teammate by the largest percentage? Mm. Who? Which driver is losing to the teammate by the largest percentage? If you want, we can. I mean, you know who the drivers are, but we, for the listeners at home, we could we could name off who the drivers are in the top teams. Yeah. So, yep. So. Red Bull, you got Verstappen and Perez. In yep. Ferrari, you got um, Leclerc and Sainz. Yep. Uh, in McLaren, you've got uh, um, um, Dan Norris. I mean, Landon Norris and um, Ricciardo. Yep. Uh, in Alpine, uh, you've got um, uh, bloody what's his name? Um, uh, Alonso and. Ocon is he the other? Alpine? Ocon, yeah, that's it. Yeah, and then Alpha Tower is Gasly and <laughs> Gasly and Tsunoda. Yeah, so that that's they're basically that the, they're the people you're choosing between. I'm gonna say uh, Ricciardo is having an absolute crocker against uh, Lando Norris. You are 100 percent correct. I hate this question because mm. I don't want to. I want to point that out, but you are correct. Mm. So my calculation. What do you reckon he's going to do next year? Uh have a year off. I think. NASCAR. NASCAR would be good. Mm. Yeah. He'd Europe crush everyone, it. Anyway. He'd crush it in the US. Yeah. It's tough though. How do you, where do you go from, do like, have a, have a year off and do some media and have, start a podcast and then do like, the fucking a, party. Be, fucking, yeah, have a party and then do party. the Le Mans shit like that. I don't know. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So losing to Norris by 81% was, was my calculation. Yeah, right. Do you want to hear the others? Yeah, go on. Science to Leclerc, uh, fourteen percent. Max is beating Perez by thirty-seven percent. Russell is beating Lewis by sixteen percent, and Gasly fifty percent. Yeah. So, so Ricardo is by far the worst of the top teams. You're googling shit. You can't do that. I'm not googling. What are I'm you doing? Googling. You're googling. I was uh, researching ahead for the next section, but that's okay. Okay. I can multitask. Question number four. So you're still in this. You get this one I'm and the next one, I'm right? You win. I'm still in. Right. Max is currently sitting 
at 11 race wins out of 18. Yes. So far. The record for the most ever wins in the season is 13. It's held by two people. Name one of those people. Where's Max at so far this season? Max is 11 wins out of 18 so far. If and it the helps, record is 13? The record is 13, but if it helps, there are more races this year than ever before. There, there was never this many races in F1. So 11 out of 18 is pretty fucking good. Mm. But there's talk of mm. him beating the record, which I'm guessing he, good chance he, he will. He well do by the end yeah. of the season. It's totally plausible for him to pick up another two wins. Yeah. Um. Geez, you'd have to think, and this is not my answer, but I'm okay. just saying, I'm just thinking, thinking out loud. loud. You'd, you'd have to think that um, Hamilton would definitely be in, in that. At I least mean, on I'm, the cards. I can't answer the question because it um, would ruin the... But... Um, can Schumacher's had some good seasons? This is not how this works. You can see me. You can't like say an answer without it being an answer and then judge by my reaction. You'd have to just Mate, give an it's, answer. It's not my fault if you can't keep a poker face. Well, that's not the point of the quiz. You need to know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, right. Uh, Hockenberg, how did he do in 2016? Hmm. Oh, that's a tough one. Okay, I, I'm, I'm actually not going to say Hamilton because it's always been Hamilton and Verstappen, and they've always been pretty neck and neck and that sort of thing. So it's oh, not I don't really know. possible. Hamilton was pretty dominant there for a long time. Where Red Bull, yeah, was, was oh, not just. I'm just thinking last year. You're right. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. It's just so easy to go Hamilton, isn't it? You really, you really, this is not how, I'm going to turn my video off, Kendo. Give me a fucking answer. Hamilton, let's do it. Wrong. Fuck. Wrong. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I read yeah. you like a book. Wow. Um, who was it? The answers are Michael Schumacher, mm. who won 13 out of 18 in 2004. Holy shit. And Sebastian Vettel, who won 13 out of 19 in 2013. Yeah, right. Including nine consecutively, Vettel, in 2013. Wow. By the way, I would, I would never fucking guess these. I, just, I, I Googled this, yeah. all this information. So you, you're yeah, doing right. well. You lost, but you're doing well. Fair enough. All right, final question. This was just announced today, I think. F1 Sprint. Are you, 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 I can see, show me hands. Show me hands. <laughs> F1 sprint occurred three times in 2022. What what yes. do you think of the sprint, by the way? I like them. Okay. All right. F1 sprint occurred three times in 2022. So for people who are not into F1, the F1 sprint is basically after qualifying, which normally sets the position of the race, to have a quick race where they get the ability to race against each other for the final qualifying position. So essentially over the weekend, you get quali, you get a very quick race with no pit stops, yep. and then you get the proper race. Came in this oh. year. They did it three times. Is some no people like it, some people don't. No. Sprint. What's that? You had to pit once, I think. No, no pitting. No pitting. Oh. No. Oh, I mean, you, you could if you wanted to, but you would just, you wouldn't. You would lose. Because it ends about when your tyres run out, because I think it goes for 20 laps. Yeah. Or something. Yes. Um, so, 2023, how many times will the F1 sprint happen on the calendar? How many times? How many sprints next year? They just announced today how many sprints they're doing next year. Oh, I have no idea, but I'm going to say four. Okay, the answer is six. We, you were, you really? were, on, yeah, you, you were onto it being more than this year. Yeah, it was three this year, isn't it? Three this year. Austria, yep. Imola. Where's the last one? Uh, I think it's Bahrain or something. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. No idea. I think it's a bit shit, but it's interesting they're doing more of them. Hmm. All right. I like so you got, what do you get? Two out of five? But you're you're close. I'll give I'll give you a bonus question. How old was yeah, Max right. when he made his F1 debut? Nineteen. Seventeen. Bullshit. <laughs> yeah. He didn't even have his driver's license. Wow. All right. Get into the news. 
Mm. Oh shit! Yeah, I put in got. the group. We're going to go live in the group for questions. Yeah, for questions. Yeah, that's. But fine. I also put we're, we're, we're not at questions yet. I know. But it's seven thirty-five. They can wait. Where's the news? What's what do you got the news? Oh, okay. I'm looking at the first one here. <clears throat> All right. Brewdog James Watt wins court case. Um. This is some text from the article that I couldn't read because you have to pay for it. Basically. There's a disgruntled ex-partner that was mm. behind the BBC documentary and um, there was a court case decided today or whenever we saw this posted that basically decided that a lot oh. of those claims were not true and the BBC... Wow, that's a really bad story. So BBC he was in a relationship a with lot a of those chick claims. and... He was in a relationship with a lady and there was a whole bunch of trolling going on. And that then, then I think I don't know if he was his ex at the time. His ex, said yes. That said that he could that she said she could find out all of all the troll accounts, but she needed money. So yeah. he paid her. And it turns out she was the troller. It's insane. I'm hanging for the movie. Fuck's sake. This is crazy shit. Wow. That's uh and so that and all that information was the source of the BBC documentary as well. At least some of it. Apparently that they, they withdrew 12 uh, they made 12 changes to the accusations in that documentary that we talked about on this podcast. Yeah. After this court hearing. Um wow. that's um yeah, that's a pretty uh, sad story. It's pretty crazy. But I did say at the time, it seemed dodgy. Yeah. That story seemed dodgy. It seemed yeah, thin yeah. and dodgy. And um, people bought it up, hook, line and sinker, because people love to beat up people like that. And it's mm. good for business for the media. Yeah. Um, so interesting. Yeah. Wow, interesting. That's and crazy. um, that's uh, yeah, that's pretty pretty crazy. Wow. Oh uh, well, maybe a bit of tall poppy syndrome there or something like that. Um, all right. Oh, oh, we have another over under result too. Let me. Oh, do we change these around? So, which one's that one? So we had this behemoth, right? Doing oh, the yes, crowdfunding. Yes. We looked at their prediction for their profit. And I think yes. that predicted, um, what was it? Overrunner prediction, EBITDA prediction, two point six million, million dollar pro profit. Yeah, and I and that was a, a year or so ago, and I predicted they were they were going to be four hundred k in the red. Yes. And you predicted, I think, closer to break even. Yes, I think. And I'm happy to announce, very happy to announce. Yes. Wait, where the fuck is the link? Oh, this. Oh, it's actually not up there. I think I got it on email. Anyway, but you were right. That was still profitable in that in that period. Just, just, yep. yeah, yeah, yep. That makes I, sense. I don't have the number written down here. I think it was two hundred grand profit or something like that. But still profitable yeah. last financial year. Fuck yeah! So you, so you win. What's the so current you, score for the under over? I'm looking at it right now. So you, okay, Hendo wins. It is two two. Sick. Is it first to ten? First to ten. This is a comeback though, because it was two zero. That's why they call me the bad girl. That's <laughs> All right. So it's two two. I'm updating the score right now in that document. And right. uh, the only one we've got outstanding is the National Homebrew Awards around whether or not you get a medal. Oh, I mean, yeah, the national. Yes, yes, the yeah. uh, the a uh, AABC. Absolutely. When when's that happening? Uh, that is going to be uh, a fly down on the, it's the 14th of October or something like that. So it's that Saturday night. So okay. it's going to be Saturday the 15th of October. All right. So a couple of weeks till then. So we need four, we need three more over under. Well, actually, we're, we're first to 10. Wait, is it best of 10 or first to 10? First to 10. We need 20. We need 13 more. We're getting there. Get bets. But if you can think of anything else. Got it. 
Oh, I've got one, I think, coming up. Okay, good. All right, so new story number, I don't know, whatever we're up to. Oh, uh, your mates and Black Flag. Black Flag. Both crowd pretty fund prominent on the sunny coast breweries. Day. <laughs> What's that? Two Sunshine Coast Brewery crowdfunding on the same day. Yeah, pretty prominent. Probably the two, would you say the two most prominent sunny coast craft breweries? Yeah. Possibly? Yeah. Um, crowdfunding on the same day. What do you think? What do you think are you, um, your mates? Um, I I can't wait to see it. I saw I saw their video tonight saying they're yes. blown away by the response and um, there were some interesting numbers in there. That they're, they're definitely it sounds like it's a very big fucking shed they've got, but I think they've been really yes. smart with how they're expanding. From what I know, I think they bought um, Marzen's own old canning line, which is an right. upgrade, but not a ridiculously expensive one. Yes, yes. Um, and. They're moving next door, which means they're not going to have to build a whole new site, which I think is yes. smart. Yes, yeah, very um, smart. Queensland-focused so, distribution. Yeah, yeah, Queensland-focused local. A couple of tap local. rooms. I, I had a chat to Maddie. He came down to the brewery a few months ago, and I think what I think what they're doing yep. is good. Yeah. Yeah, right. I, th- I think what I, they're doing I agree. is smart. The thing that really rung out to me um, is that since 2020, they've been cash flow positive. Well... Let's let's wait to see the results in the report because I think it said it in it, the video. It said the last three years in total they've made this amount of money. Right. Which sometimes sometimes when people say this is how much I've made in the last three years, it kind of means I made a fair bit in 2020, not much in 2021, and fuck all in 2020. Well, exactly. It was right. It's COVID. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I think but I think at that I volume, think it's pretty impressive. With a big venue, that business makes a lot of sense. Well, the thing is, I think that that your mates are a massive marketing machine. This fucking dog. Give me one minute. This fucking dog. <laughs> Elon. <laughs> All right. If you think that Elon should get his um, nuts cut the- off, um, post in the Facebook group. We might start a poll. Don't get a dog, dude. It's probably good for Elon, I think. Fuck Elon. Elon's very frustrated go on marketing machine absolute marketing machine your mates um and uh i reckon it's going to break your record for the biggest crowdfund do you think so that's my under over yeah wow okay interesting i think it's going to break your record i'll I'll take that i think i think i think think matt fatale is going to go big on this one wow all right I, i interesting wow and I'll, I'll, say, I'll say no. From, I'll take from what I've so what so give us a number. What do you think? Well, you have to do over under. You, you yours is two point two. I'll say I'll say under. No, 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 no. I'm not saying two point two. I'm saying bigger. What's your number? Three and a half. Holy fuck! I mean, why did you say that when I was about to take two point two? For firstly, um, all right. I mean, under for sure. I think I think they'll, I think they'll get three and a half. Wow. And I reckon, I reckon I'll get it. Wow, that would be that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to know. It's hard to know. I think that. I mean, it's a great. I mean, now I'm 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 no as you know I'm no fan of of crowdfunding and breweries and everything like that. But there's a lot of, and this is not financial advice, but um, there's a lot of pluses with um, uh, with your mates. If if I was that sort of person who did. Um, partake in those type of investments um, between yours and your mates probably would be the the few that I would consider doing that. And my reasons are is that it's got a great brand. They just they know their brand, mm. right? You, they just they know their brand and they just they're everything about their brand. Yeah, you know? and they 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 um um they play on that brand. So so well. Yeah. Um, it's on the Sunshine Coast. Um their growth strategy is strictly Queensland. A couple more tap rooms. Mm. It's it's a you know, uh it's a very focused growth strategy. We're yeah. gonna take the place next door. Um, we're gonna put in some bigger equipment. 
Um, we're going to focus on expanding distribution in Queensland. We're going to open a few tap rooms in Queensland. It's not like they're going, we're going to take over the world. Yes, and no, I think all this fine. sort of shit. They fucking yeah. know exactly what they're going to do. Know but exactly do you think, do you think I, I agree with that. Do you, do you think, how can you, on one hand, say I'm going to focus 100% locally, but then also say it makes sense to build a brewery that brews 10 million litres? Do you think they can send, sell 10 million litres locally? No, not no, not straight away. Mm. But they can get to 10 million without having to move again. Yeah, that'd be nice. That's the that's the key thing. Yeah. Um, is that, you know, lands at a fucking premium on the Sunshine Coast and they got very lucky that the place next door happened to pop up. Yeah. And I reckon they might have overstretched themselves because of very big space and a very well how sought big is after. It? Do you know how big the space is? It's like a couple of thousand square metres. Oh, that's all right. Rents on, um, rents on big sheds are pretty cheap. How are they going to do 10 million litres out of a couple of thousand square metres? Full tanks. Really high ceilings. Full tanks. Uh, mm. Go outside. Mm. Um, wouldn't take much. Um, and um, but companies got you know good governance, um, good brand, good product, good hospitality experience. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with all of that. I don't think they're going to raise three point five million in the current environment, though. You don't think so? I don't think so. I mean, like I would say, like my mates who just did crowdfunding, Grand Jacks, and they're not as big as your mates, but they're they're kind of the equivalent for Jim. Like they're very they execute extremely well, super mm. local strategy. But their plan is to export, which is what you do with spirits because it travels mm. well and the government incentivizes yep. you to do it and all the rest of it. Yep. yep. Um, amazing branding, amazing local experience. They do everything extremely well. Um, their crowdfunding ends tomorrow. And they it looks to me like they're not going to hit their minimum. Really? Yeah. It's it's a smaller brand. What was the like minimum? Seven hundred thousand, and the maximum mm. two point two. Because they, I, I, yeah, I, I, sh I think they, I think you see other people's campaigns and think, okay, that's where I want to benchmark it. But you got to you got to consider the timing of it. Like this current environment is very very different. Like Sunny Coast haven't had one, so that would be in their favor. Yeah. But yep. the timing is different now it's different now there's a crowdfunding every five minutes um yeah a lot of people have already invested in their favorite brands so mm -hmm. if they could pull that off that would be i think amazing. i think they'll do it i think they'll do it the other thing is that they will only do it if they set their maximum that high yes so yeah i guess you'd have an unlimited you can go as, as high as five million all right there you go. is that That's the good. maximum we're allowed to raise is there a yeah. cap yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, all right, that's a good one. I did not know that. So next, uh, well, no, it's going to take a while. A month or so, we'll... We could do one for Black Flag as well, but they haven't really put any information out. No, nah, I haven't really seen anything from Black Flag. All right, we'll 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 do one, an over-under prediction for Black Flag as well. Yep. But once they put it out, uh, add a bit more information. All right, uh, Ballistic Recall, we, we we this kind of got sprung upon us last week live on the yeah. show. We talked about it. There's not much else to say about that, is there? No, yeah, they just recall. Yeah. Um, Beer and Brew Awards, I put in here because I just saw it on their website. I, I don't really know what this is. Do, are, you, are you all about these awards or no? Um, do you give a shit? Never heard about it. Uh, have yeah. you say at the Beer and Brew Awards? Hey, is there a podcast award? They should, people should fucking... No, there's mails. not. Then. No, there's not. I, I did well, that's fucking that. shit. I did check that. But if you go onto their website and over on the right hand side on that beer and brewer yes. uh, awards article, there's oh, a little, you can there's a form man. Little form. You fill that in. Lifetime achievement, best brewer, best new brewing company, best beer venue, best brew pub. Oh, I should have voted you for lifetime achievement. I've already voted. Ah. Uh, I've what? only lived a short life so oh, far. Fuck not. Oh, but look at the past winners. You're you're in the mix as you know. Anyway, I don't know a lot about these awards, uh, but if you want to vote for your favorite brewery and brew pub, get over to beerandbrew.com. Who's that lifetime fucking achievement? Oh, Jane. There you go. She's younger than you, mate. Previous winners, Chuck Hahn, Brad Rogers, Brendan Barris. Well, Chuck's Pete, as old Peter as Minning. Chuck's 300. We established that last yeah. episode. Best brewer, Sam Fuss. Yep. Mm. Best new brewing company, Heaps Normal. Yeah. 
That's 2021 results. Yeah, that's last year's. Oh, kickback got got fucking runners up. I had a good time. Kickback last week. If you find yourself in Aldinga, which is down in McLa- McLaren Vale, south of Adelaide, go to Kickback Brewing. The beers are sick. All right. I'm gonna let's go live in the group. I've got a I've got questions, and we were also gonna do our our top five beers. No, no I want to talk about slimline cans. Oh fuck. I always do this. Yes. Slimline beer cans about, in the future. You ask me about slimline cans. I, I totally skipped it. Okay, ask me. Um, did you ever enjoy any of those green Australian brew code pale owls and those slim cans back in the day? No. You didn't have them? No, no, I'm just saying I didn't enjoy them. Oh, 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 I see. You consumed them, you didn't enjoy them. Why didn't I enjoy them? Because they're shit. No, the beer was okay. No, I know. Cans. The beer was great. Yeah. Yeah. If I want to drink out of a fucking slim lion can, um, I will have a Red Bull. Or a seltzer. Or a seltzer. Or a fruity beer. I nearly bought some this week to bring on the fucking show. And so I was did just... I. I was, I was going to Did you today. know that there's actually, there's there was two in the BW, two brands in the BWS and um, they're both CUV. They've come up with two brands. Wow. Very interesting strategy. I can't remember the names of the brands. Just fighting each other. Uh, well, I think it's just like launch two hand grenades and maybe you'll hit something. Throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. Yeah, tw- throw twice as much shit and you've got doubled your chances, haven't you? All right. Next week, if um, you're in, I was literally going to do the same thing. So next week, let's get the fruity next beer. Next week, we'll get some fruity beer. All right. Um, but no, I don't like slimline cans for beer. No, I agree with you. I think they're shit. But this, I didn't think about this. Because this is actually it's, a good point. it's like um, um, if you're going to have a beer at home, which is where you're usually going to have a can of beer. I know you can have it in a restaurant and all this sort of stuff. Um, but you're going to want something that's more akin to the size of a schooner, kind of here in South Australia, um, than a um, uh, than a pot. Well, this was the funny thing that I thought about this article, which is not something I thought of, is mm-hmm. apparently these Australian brewery cans were 355 mil. And Oh, that's another fucking thing. And the quote here is, um, I got sick of telling people they were bigger than most bottles after the change we saw a significant increase in off-premise sales. So these cans are actually bigger than bottles. What, but slim one cans? Well, those ones are at least. And the seltzer ones are definitely aren't, but apparently the Australian brewery ones aren't because I think they were taller. Really? Yeah. So, Do you know what they call that? Piaget's theory. Okay. When it looks different to No, no, no. You have to have if you have the short fat glass versus the tall skinny glass. Right. Um children will um go for the tall skinny glass, even though they might be the same size. Yeah. They'll go for the tall skinny glass because it's perceived to be bigger. Well, in this case, the opposite is true. Correct. I think. Um, no, it's perceived to be bigger, but it's actually smaller. Well, but this is the opposite. These were perceived to be smaller, but they're actually bigger. Right. Well, they're, sh- they're shorter than bottles, but people were thinking they were small. And he was saying they're actually bigger than all the bottles you're drinking at your fancy restaurants because they're all 330. It just... Slimline cans just smack of Red Bull. Red Bull have just done a great job of owning that format. It's definitely a seltzer and, and pre-mixed spirits thing, yeah. you know, as well. Like Soft gin. drinks and all that yeah. sort of stuff. I mean, I have some Slimline, Slimline cans in my fridge right now. You do? Yeah, it's Coke Zero from a Jack Daniels. Okay. You've got Coke Zero <laughs> already in your in your Jack Daniels. Um. Yeah, but sometimes I'll buy a bottle of Jack Daniels. These are fucking expensive, man. Yeah, true. You get, get, get the woodies around you. We'll get around the Woody. Woodstock? Yeah, dude. Get out. Yeah, back in the day. Nah. That's, that's Woodstock what I was, is... I was all about is, that. No, nah, it's not Jack 440s. Daniels, mate. It's not Jack Daniels. It's definitely not Jack Daniels. It's dog shit. But you can't get 440 cheap. mil spirits because they have this rule that you can't have more than two standos in a serving of spirits. Oh, well, back in my day, that was that was the go-to. I haven't well, when the rules Woody's were for a while. The, the less rules. Yeah, okay. 
All right, I agree with you. Slimline cans are shit. They are shit. Um, and what does it go there? It's like, oh, slim and sleek cans are up in volume, yeah, because people drink a fucking lot. I think that's just, isn't that just like from seltzers and the fruity beers and all that kind of shit? What else? It's not proper. Beer. It's nothing you or I are drinking. It's 375 cans or nothing, in my opinion. Yes, exactly. Even all if right. you go the 355 mil can, you feel like you're getting ripped off. 100%. Not a fan. And all the people that were experimenting with weird can designs, I feel like they ended up just going, ah, you know what? We're just going to go 375 mil cans. Yeah. Like Ben spoke Colonial, they used to do those fancy open ones. They just went normal. Australian Brewery went back to the normal ones. Yeah. Pirate Life, I think. What do they do now? They're, they're just normal cans, aren't they? They used to do 355s. And 500s they used to do for their 500s. seasons. Yeah. Bolted still do 500s for their thing. Oh, but then no, the 500s like are the not. Limiteds, like but the the limiteds. 375s, the 440s, and the 500 mil cans are not slim cans. They're not, and that and that, these, that was these like the twelve dollar can of the, they don't the use twelve dollar four hundred and forty mil can of fucking Hellas that I bought from Deeds. How much? Twelve dollars. You you're always drinking the four forty Heinekens. I mean, not Heinekens, the um Hollandias. They're five hundreds, mate. Five hundreds. It's fifteen dollars for five five hundreds versus twelve dollars for one four forty. Utterly ridiculous. It's mad. All right, we are live. Awesome. Live for Let's questions. Have a look here. I can and see the comments. While we wait for questions, I've got three to kick us off because we um had some from earlier. Stephen and Kegel what do you got? asked, "What do we think of the Ether rebrand?" Do you have a look? Um, yes, I did. Yeah. Um, I, I like the I like the change. Um, because um, um, I. Th- you know the 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 old uh, can branding. Everything was a skull, and it doesn't. You know, it's never going to appeal to a broad audience. I mean, I, they look fucking great, but I I just don't think the idea of everything being a skull is going to be to appeal to a, a wider audience than what you could. Right. So I like where they've gone with it and how they have engaged artists. And they're paying them. Um. And did they um, pay everyone who submitted to that competition though? Because I saw in their face, no, they pay them if they get gets on a can, so a thousand bucks. But then if it doesn't get in a the can, they don't get paid, right? Um, no, see, I don't like that. I there's people have been doing that for a long time. I think that fucks over artists. I think if you want to pay a designer, you should pay a designer. But I don't know what they did with theirs, but I don't like the competition idea. I think I don't like that idea. Yeah, well, uh, I like it. Um, I think it's pretty good. Um, I think, I think, um, you know, the, um, it's a great, it's a good refresh, uh, for Aether. Dave's very passionate. Dave, Dave, um, is extremely passionate about, you know, what he, what he does and what he wants the brand to be and that sort of thing. Um, and, and, and he as well. And, um, I think, I think it's a, I think it's a good change. I like the ginger beard thing. It's yeah, that's cool. Kind of interesting. See what new beers they come out with. Yeah. I think they look cool. I just I think they look more like limited release beers than a kind of cohesive brand that makes it clear what what that is. That would be my only sort of um you know um thing with that is that because they all look different, it's very difficult to get a, a cohesive brand. Um, you know, to like you want to be able to point to a can and go. Like I can point to a black ops can now and go, that's a black ops can. Yeah. Or I can point to a bolt can again. It's a bolt can. Um, you need you do need some cohesion. Um, the um, big shed guys actually have done some something really interesting. Every one of their cans looks different, um, but what they've built into their um, brand or their can design now is they put a chevron at the top in black, which. Um, which has Big Shed written on it, and yeah. so you can you can clearly see that it's a Big Shed beer, and it's really well done. I think I think people with that cohesion sort of thing need to think about where they're selling a lot of the beer. Like I I was thinking about this when we first did our can design 
when when you walk into a bottle shop, like you're looking around well and truly before you get the can. Like what like when you're looking close enough to a can to be able to read and to be able to appreciate the intricacies of the label and read the description, you've already decided what you're going to buy by that point. Like you're the chances are you're looking at a can that closely because you've already bought it and you're at home and you're that keen, you want to learn more. Yes. But you're deciding on what you're going to buy when you walk into the bottle shop and you're meters and meters away from the fridge. So like I, something like this, I think as limited release would be good. Or if it's your venue and you're selling most of your beer at your own venue, then this is awesome. But if you're selling your beer in a most of it in a bottle shop, yes, it's not going to be obvious who is making this beer. Because also, yes. like, what are you looking at in their Facebook there? That's the entire label. You're just seeing the yes. can. Like, it just looks like art, which is great, yes. but but you don't know who who made it. Who brewed it? Yep. Yeah. New logo too. Did you see the new logo? That that AE smiley face thing. I don't think it's a smiley face. It's like it's a, a teardrop. A, a drop. A teardrop sort of thing. Yeah. Teardrop, yeah. It's got the. It's got the, the. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. What was their old logo? Let me see if it's. Uh, it's like. Um... It was a, a real complicated one, wasn't it? it was a, that was a wreath with a cursive AB for Aether Brewing sort of thing. Oh, yeah. I'm looking at it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. No, Damien, I'm not going to chug the double IPA. Actually, okay, I'll chug the double IPA. That's all i got left. Jacob says it's go, it's live and it's not disastrous. Give it time. It's, it's 802. How about I get the Jack Daniels out? And we make it fucking disastrous. Going from the 2.5 standos to the JD. So let's get... Oh, yeah. Let's get weird. Oh, yeah. Um, I just had the same... I just had another one of these because it's all I got. Yeah. Actually, I might have one of those. I don't, I don't want to drink it right now, though, because it's fucking dangerous. Chug it. Yeah, no, you should. Do you have Jack Daniels in your fridge? No, no, the, the seeing double. Oh, my God. It's so fucking good. All right. Adam Garley. Garley. Gailey says, yeah. so many crowdfunding, so few fucks to give. That's a bit negative. Um, question, not a, a colon. Question, colon. That's good. Radio. At what good. point has brewery correct, crowdfunding... Correct format. Yep. At what point has brewery crowdfunding jumped the shark? And I had to Google what jumped oh. the shark meant. Did you, did you know that? Yes. I'm a fucking old man. Of course <laughs> I know what fucking jumping the shark means. Right. It's the episode of Happy Days where in, the, in Hawaii and the Fonz is fucking water skiing behind a boat right. and there's a shark and he got, jumps over the shark. And that's Why does when he Happy do that? Days, no reason whatsoever, but ha Happy Days, I used to watch Happy Days every day. It was such a good show. And that's when it went shit. Oh, that's what it means. They've, they've gone too far and it's become shit. Yeah. Wow. That's when Happy Days went shit, when the Fonz jumped the shark. That was a turning point. All right. Well, I like that. That that makes sense. Um, well, um, what, what, I what's your answer to the question? You had to look that up. Well, what year was that? I'm going to Google that right now. <laughs> Can I guess for an under over? Yep. Uh, it's going to. I'm going to say 1978. So do you? So if you say 78 and I say over or under, are you prepared to take that bet? I'm not. I'm not looking at it right now. I can promise that. Um. Yeah, I think it's 78. 78. Well, I mean, that's that's before I was even born. Uh, I'll say I'll say after. After 78. After 78. Over. Okay. All right. Look it up. Ah, oh, 77. September 77. Oh. Fuck it. <laughs> Jesus. I shouldn't have taken that bet. I wasn't confident at all. It was just a guess. Put it on the list. I'm putting it on. <laughs> Fuck. Damn it! I just, I just lost. That's a, these points are valuable. That was a frivolous, frivolous under over bet, mate. I oh, know. You throwing those away, mate. I know. But last time I didn't want to take the national homebrew one. You got all angry at me. I didn't want to piss you off. You do you, mate? Right, that's true. So that's ah, oh, damn it. That's three two to Hendo. Fuck. Jumping the shark. Jumps out. All right, but what's the answer to the um, question? Has crowd so, the shark? at one point, oh, fuck it, jump the shark. Fucking start of 2021, I think. Yeah. People still throwing money at it. What are you going to do? I think no one else realized that before crowdfunding, 
breweries were all raising money anyway behind closed doors and no one seems to know or care and now it's a big deal because they see it yeah and my argument has always been that it's good to be transparent it's good that you see it now and we'll know yes. if there's too many the your mates one will, will be a great test the black flag and Absolutely. your mates we'll see what happens with those two is is to whether or not there's any interest anymore for them and it seems to be waning but as to whether or not it's okay for businesses to raise money like Good luck starting a fucking brewery that can do 10 million liters a year without raising money. Don't forget, your mates have part of the success they have now because the first thing they did with their business was they went on national TV on Shark Tank to yes. try and raise money because yes. that's what people had to do. Of course. Because there's no other ways to raise money. So I say don't hate Absolutely. on the crowdfunding or the people. Hey, what was the, the money. Shark Tank about number? What was the what? What was the Shark Tank money they were going to try to raise? Who was that what guy? Was, what was Steve, the what's his name? Steve that, Baxter. That Steve Baxter. Yeah. He told him basically to get fucked. He also told me to get fucked. I recorded on our podcast. So if you want to listen to that, go listen to the Black Ops podcast. Oh, I've, I've, heard his, I've heard his thing where you're like, you're selling kegs that cost $350 to make for $250. But he, but he also, I think they were willing to invest in your mates, but I think they turned them down from memory, unless I've got that wrong. Oh, do you know who should get on the fucking show? Steve Baxter. He's a bit it's of a like grumpy fucking, fucker. <laughs> yeah, but it's the five years later. It's like, hey, mate, what do you think of all this shit now? I'd love to hear his fucking point of view of it. Yeah. I mean, we could probably get him on if you want. Fuck, that'd be sick. Yeah, I don't know if he's invested in any breweries, but... Um... Yeah, I know, but I wonder what he thinks about, you know, the the the, the evolution of, uh, you know, your pitch. Yeah your mates pitch and where your mates are now and right. the sort of money that they're trying to raise fascinating that'd be fucking that'd be a good chat all right <laughs> all right. All right let's see how's this live going is anyone asking oh here we go um jacob says i think the bh crowdfunding campaign was lightning in a bottle that's been really tough to replicate since then yeah i mean i mean i'm obviously biased but I tend to think that as well. I think the brand was strong and, um, you know, with the timing was good and all that kind of yeah. stuff. And I think and timing that's why is really I think, important. And so because these guys are live now, they haven't heard the part that's not live. And I just called three and a half million mm. raised crowdfunded for your mates. Yes. And I've taken the, it. I've taken the under, which means I'm probably going to hopefully going to, I mean, pick up my, Winning mug. No, I'm actually losing this fucking thing now. So that's that's to get back to being three three. Disappointing. Oh, that's right. What is it? It's Freddy Krueger fucking flannel, isn't it? Krueger, yeah. Shit, eh? Oh, Nick Lennon says shit. Got to do a bit of work spewing. Oh, don't drink at work. <laughs> Damien Rigby says field trip two point oh. Send it. Yeah, that's Send a good it. point. Bloody oath. I don't know if organising anything with, with you is, is a real smart move after last time, though, I have to say. What do you mean? It rocked up an hour and a half late. Yeah, it's the ferry. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's more your personal personal organisation skills. Yeah, well, that too, <laughs> but the ferry. All right. Craig Maiden says, post a photo of the stone and wood, that uh, salty low elk beer they have, which I think is 1.1%. East Point. 1 .1%, East Point. Yes. Um, They've, they're discontinuing it. Craig says, what an interesting development. Seems low elk isn't doing so well. Personally, I feel that breweries like Sober are needed to provide the no elk, low elk option. Breweries that make beer with alcohol should stick to just that. That's a, that's an aggressive take. I think he's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think you're missing the point um, is that um, East Point is not a low alcohol beer. East Point is a sour beer. And that's yeah. where it, that's where it missed the mark. Well, it was a bold um, beer. Like like when they brought that out. Oh, absolutely! It was like, what, what the fuck are you doing? They, they but they tried. They tried was. so hard. Um, Stonewood tried so hard not to call it a sour. Yeah. So hard. Well, they also didn't really it call sour. it a low elk, did they? Did they? Yeah, they did. They called it a. Yeah. Let me bring it up. Well, that's what they tried to do. They tried to sort of position it as the low elk beer. But it just happened yeah. to be like a, a goza goza style. It was. Um, it was. It was. A, it was a one percent goza, wasn't it? And so, even with the best 
marketing effort around sort of trying to position it as a low alcohol beer. Oh, 2.7. That's, that's this is what Craig's thinking from it. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's one stando. Oh, it's mm-hmm. even less than that. It's probably 0.8 stando. 0.8 stando. Um, now, the thing is, is that Craig sees it as a low out beer and thinking it's low out that missed the mark. But the reason it missed the mark is because it's sour beer, not because it's a low out beer. Now, had um, Stone and Wood come out with a 2.7%, say, lager, fuck, it might have done well. Might have done well. Well, hmm. yeah, I, I agree with you, but I just wonder if it's kind of zero alcohol, super low or nothing, isn't it? Like 2.7 is a light beer. Like what's a good example of a recent light beer that someone's brought out in our space that's gone well, you, well? no craft brewer can get below sort of three-ish percent without pasteurization. Well, yeah, but there's plenty of craft breweries bringing out non-alc beers, beers and they seem to be doing yeah. fairly well. Yeah. I think that there's a space in, and I think there's a gap in the market, to be fair. For what? Um, for light beer. You think so? Absolutely. It used to be that's what people would drink. So you have a look at what we've got at the moment. We've got mid strength at three and a half percent, and then we've got ultra low alcohol. Yeah. Right. And there's nothing in between. No, but there were. Whereas if you have a look at like the big breweries and stuff like that, how would we know? Craft brewers never produced one. Well, there was Pacer that was going well for a long time. That was Pacer was a fucking excellent beer. Awesome name, awesome brewery. Crushed it for a very long time. You never hear about it anymore. Yep, absolutely, because because yeah, just doesn't really exist anymore. I mean, I know Fortitude still exists, but um, but um, yeah, Pacer was amazing. Yeah, but no one really sort of saw that as in like you know we don't we want to produce a a, a low alk beer and it's it's mid strength or it's ultra low alk and so I yeah. would say to any brewer out there, don't neglect the sort of two and a half to three percent alcohol range. Just got a pasteurizer. Just- but this evidence to the contrary, wouldn't you say? Pace has no, died. This beer's died. A pace has died because the plate, the thing got sold. It was it was doing really well. No, but no. Pace was it was being contract brewed for a long, long time. It was. I feel like that that's died off over a long period of time. Very long yeah. period of time. Yeah, but that's a different story. That brand was neglected. So. Mm. I think well, when was the last time you drank a two and a half percent beer? I would never drink a two and a half percent beer. I would be way more likely to drink a yeah, zero. Yeah, we're not the craft beer market, though. Yes, we are. How are we not the craft beer market? I, I, I would. Mm-hmm. Have you, though? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, this, this, <laughs> did this surprise you, this beer? This did not surprise me at all because it was a bold beer to bring out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my 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 position is is that it didn't it didn't succeed because it was a sour, yeah, uh, not because it was a low alcohol beer. It's quite a tasty beer. I'm sure you you tried it. Probably brewed it, did you? No, tried no, I never brewed it. No. Did you like it? Um, yeah, it's right. All right, mm-hmm. it's pretty it easy. Right. It's, we couldn't really drink drink lots of it or anything like that. It's not really, you know, don't really gravitate towards sour beers normally anyway. So yeah, okay. Except Swansea yeah. Day. That was fucking sick. Yeah, was it? Mm. Fuck, I spent some money on Pierce that day. How does that work? Because <laughs> you, you, you pay to go, don't you? Yeah, it's 100 bucks a ticket, man. And I got three beers. Jesus. Oh, and some food. Where'd all your money go? I probably dropped uh, about 400 bucks that day. On takeaways? Or- no, no, be- just no beers. Wow. So we started going rounds on bottles of oh, no. Tantion. It was $150 a bottle. And What the fuck? Why is it $150 a bottle? On premise price. Jesus Christ. And then, uh, so I bought this really good um, Three Floyds bourbon barrel aged barley wine. It was very tasty. Very tasty. A little bit on the back end of its age, but uh, it's still good. What kind of barley wine is life? For that? Barley wine's the most under underrated fucking style of beer out there, and everyone fucking bypasses it. But barley wine is life. Okay, so the, so the the uh, this podcast advice is twelve percent or two percent, and nothing in between, pretty much. No, no, no. 
Cantillons are not fucking twelve percent. Barley wines. What happened? What was it? What was the standos in the barley wine? Uh fuck! It was a five hundred ml bottle. I think it's twelve percent. How many yeah. standos is that? A, a lot. Three. Uh, yeah, I don't know. A lot. Uh, all right, Jilly. Four point seven five. <laughs> what is it? Four point seven five standos. Holy shit! Wow, that's <laughs> that's strong. Um, Jilly uh, says, knows. "I've never had a low alk beer. I'd rather have one mid strength." Than a few low alks, and I think I'm exactly the target market. I agree. I agree. Mm, I'm, I'm, mm. With, I'm, I'm with you. Um, Absolutely, Damien Rigby. But now, yeah, but but mid strength is two point two point seven is different. That's like a light. It's like a light beer. That's not a midi, is it? Is it two point seven? That's light. It's light beer. Light beer. Yeah. It's um, Forks light or Han Premium light. We're all about that two point seven, two point eight percent. Pace was two point eight, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. And midi's like three and a half. Damien Rigby says Pacer and Cairns was awesome to take camping, et cetera, for day drinking. Then it switched back to bottles. Oh, did it? When they contracted huh. it. That's a shame. Yeah. Oh, Ross, Ross Kendrick. The king what? himself is in the, is in the live chat. Where? Where is he? He's, He's right here. He's right here. What did live. he say? Pacer is on the way back. Is it? According to the king. He would know. Yep, he loves it. I remember him telling me once because they do the they do that like the light beer day. They were doing that years before we were all even talking about it. And he was telling me it's not a bad idea because you can charge a reasonable amount, and not pay a whole lot of excise, and actually make some money. Absolutely. Yeah, I hope sense. I hope Ross is going to the Australian National Homebrew Conference where the AA the my, where I get my medal at the AABC. Yep. You should, I would um, like get, the king. I would like the king to fucking put my medal around my neck. <laughs> yes, exactly. I didn't even know. I didn't even know he was one of the twelve. Fuck it, I. There he is. Got to look. Got to look through the group. The there group he is. Membership. <laughs> <laughs> Evening, Roscoe. <laughs> Who knows now? Oh no, he'll be in the UK. Bugger. Oh, he's not going to be there. Who's going to award my um my 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 shower of golden medals? Not a golden shower, but a shower of golden medals. This is this is exactly why we don't go live anymore, Ando. There's three people listening, and you're saying and they're shit all like offended. <laughs> all right. Uh, oh, I didn't actually record who wrote this one, but oh no, no, this was um. Fuck's sake. Mighty Craft Chairman. It said stands down. It's not really stands down. He's, 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 his time is up. He's, he's, Where is that? He's stopping from the, the board. I'll read it. It's an ASX announcement today. Uh, Luke Cooper shared this with us. Mighty Craft wishes to advise the market that from the date of the AGM, 21st of November, 2022, Robin Levinson, Levison will step down as chairman and non-executive director of the board. And it sort of goes on to say that he came on board to help them list and grow the business and yep. re restructuring the board, getting new people and he's finishing up his tenure. So what's a, what's a non-executive director? Well, it means he doesn't work in the business. So he, so, so you have board members that just turn up to board meetings and you have other ones that work in the business, you know, like, like the managing director, will will run the company, but the board members will only turn up to the board meetings. And yeah, that's fine. You decisions. can have a so non-executive means they just rock up. Yeah. And just do governance shit. Yeah. Make big decisions. Um and, and do it for a number of companies at the same time. Yeah, right. I want to do that. Yeah, it's not a bad gig if you can get it. Um it's not it's not that unusual though for him to to want to work somewhere to, to be on a board somewhere else. I mean, it might be a bit of a bad signal. You should check the stock price. Please. Let's check the stock price right now. But, How's it looking? Um, uh, oh, would you like the code? It's ASX MCL. MCL. Mm. I got it right here. Oh. It's um. For it's, how's that yeah. moving average? It's, well, it's not good, but the stock market's. Is it Fibonacci? It's Fibonacci. Thirteen cents. Six more. I mean, it is like that's the you can probably see that. Can you see that? Uh, yes, I can see it's it, not oh, good. He's just it's going bad. It's not good. 13 For, cents, 41 million dollar market cap. Remember, we talked about this the other week. They paid that's 47 right. million dollars just for that one business. That's right. Um, 
So, but I mean, the fucking stock market is. I went to place. go to, um, um, you know how last week I was in Adelaide? Yeah. Right. I Adelaide. said I was going to go to um, the Spark group up, which was 600 meters back. away. Yeah. But I fucking did. And I was closed. Okay. Well, they're re- rebranding. And... No, no. No? Day of morning. Everyone was shut. What time did you Possibly. go there? After lunch. Oh. Oh, day of my, oh, for, oh, it's a public holiday. Yeah. Oh, I see. I thought you, yeah, okay. I see what you're saying. So I had a nice sleep in, got up, went, oh, I'll go and get a bite to eat or something and I'll go to the Spark pub and, pub and then go live and that sort of thing. And it was shut. Go live. Um, so I'd have gone to was the it Franklin branded for a shitty... mismatch or that like they're not that? No, 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 not yet. No, not yet. Okay. Uh, I don't even think it had Spark branding on it. If I remember correctly. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Luke White says, if barley wine is life, what are oat wine and wheat wine? Um, they are the spice of life. Okay, that's a good answer. Very good. <laughs> oh, uh, Dave L- Lavan. I've got to learn how to say these guys' names. Lavin. Lavin. Of course it's Lavin. I don't know why I wouldn't say Lavin. Um, I'll be there. I'll give you a go. Dave, I read these comments live. I can't repeat that. This is why we don't go live. What did he say? I'm not saying it. I'm getting in trouble. We'll get cancelled, mate. Oh, no, I'll say it. I'll, I'll say that one. I'm not going to say Roscoe's one though, because we'll get cancelled for that one. Oh, Doc's on the show. Sick. <laughs> Dave so Lovin good. says, I'll be there. I'll give you a golden shower. And that's not that's not appropriate. We don't want that Adios. kind of gutter commentary on this show and then darren doc robinson says love one wheat wines are excellent you said, oh, did, wheat you wine. one? Oh, I, I did doc do one i'm one. pretty sure doc's done one he would have a had to have shower done or a wheat one? Oh, adam shell's there not that one the other one. Oh, there he is you got a question adam unbelievable shell? unbelievable you know what we should do with these live calls like we should just if they've got a question they should just come onto the zoom like we could do that right now. We just put the link in there. Uh, I don't think it's a good idea. Is that a bad idea? Oh, what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> I don't know. You want to find out? <laughs> no. <laughs> Why? <laughs> these are these are some of our closest friends, Hendo. What could possibly go wrong? Oh my god. <sighs> oh, unbelievable. Right. No. No. Craig says not a good idea. Even Craig Maiden right. says it's not a good idea. He's fucking right. Hey. Steven says might see some golden showers. See, this is what this is what this is why we don't go live, isn't it? Yes, that's right. This could be the last time. So we maybe we should share the link just so it's you know it's old. <laughs> fucking hell. Unbelievable. All right. Well, um, I think that's it, mate. Mate, I love your work. <sighs> Um, I've just got a big, time, um, that's, that's a big next two months coming up. I'm in town here for the next couple of weeks, then Melbourne, then Bangkok, then back to Melbourne, then back to Brisbane, then Perth. Dave, I'm coming to Perth. Uh, I'm going to Busso, then back Love to Busso. Perth, back to Brisbane, and then Sydney. That's it's all before the end of November. Jesus. You like traveling? You don't mind it, do you? Uh, I, I like to travel. I don't like spending the money. Yeah, right. Yeah. I've spent a lot of money on fucking travel in the last few weeks. But um, anyway, if we uh, cross paths, if you're listening and we cross paths, come say hi. Come get a selfie and take a photo. And between now and next week's episode, I'll live stream from the Danchin. Absolutely. Why not? I also got the event coming up at Brewdog as well. The um, Collab Fest. Oh, when's that? The TAFE students have done a, um, a beer for. What's the date of that one? First week of October or something like that. That's next week. What, what day is it? I don't know. Now's your chance to plug it, mate. Uh, now or never. I'll plug it next week. All right. All right. Well, thank you to those people who tuned in live. Yeah. Will, will we do that again? I don't know. It's a bit of a shit show. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, and subscribe on your favorite podcast. Listen, uh, that's right. And give, give, a give it a review. rating or something. Yeah, give us a rating. It's not that hard. If you think it's shit, say it's shit. No, no, Dando, no, no. Oh, it doesn't if work it, that way. No, if it's awesome, give us five stars. If it's shit, oh. fuck off. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. We don't want does shit actually, reviews. Does that affect the algorithm? Hundred percent. We don't want oh, shit reviews. I didn't know that. Go listen to something else. There's plenty of other podcasts to listen to if you don't like this. Yeah, one. exactly. <laughs> fuck the haters. All right. Love your work, mate. See you next week. See you next week. Yeah. See you at twelve. <laughs>